Greetings, so here you are down the allotment Essex UK with Dan. So Christmas Eve 2021, so it's about a year or so since I took on this allotment. So it's USDA zone 8B here and the coldest we got to last winter was about minus 8 degrees C which is about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So going to have a bit of a harvest today. We're going to have a look around, see what's going on. Going to talk about a few future plans. So I'm going to link a few videos in the description box below. So if you wish you can have a look through those videos and see how this allotment has developed over over the last year so plenty to show and let's get on with it but before we commence this video please feel free to like it you can share it with anyone you think may find it interesting and or helpful and if you'd like to be notified of any further videos I put up please feel free to subscribe now for me allotment here must be three things time efficient enjoyable and productive and this allotment has indeed been all three of those so very happy with how it's turned out now you can see a pile of horse manure here it's probably about a year or so old now I've grown into manure from this source before and it's very very good indeed so you've got manure here and it's also mixed with wood chips so a nice balance of greens and browns carbon and nitrogen so very happy and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with this now this area here some of you may remember I grew all sorts here I grew courgettes here I also grew sweet corn here and when I took on this allotment last year this had a membrane over it so it's very lucky indeed the soil underneath it was relatively clear so what I actually did was planted directly into that soil didn't dig it over nothing like that literally using a trowel put my plug plants in and grew them away and they did well now I need to get this enriched so what I'm probably going to do is get that manure and spread it here and then cover it up I might also put some cardboard down over these weeds here because that does help indeed very much with the uh, killing the weeds underneath and also the, the cardboard helps to enrich the soil so blind it off with cardboard then the manure on top and then cover it up probably with some membrane and then leave it for planting probably around late May time so expecting some great things from this and we shall see how it does down here picking some sprouts so these are variety Evesham special or Eversham special not 100% sure how you say it but they are traditional variety and uh, some of them have blown I probably could have reduced the blowing had I removed some of the lower leaves as the plant matured but uh, one cannot do everything so many ways I like to grow traditional varieties of things because I really like to keep the older varieties going because in my opinion they are some of the best and um, of course new varieties are developed all the time of various fruits vegetables etc but uh, with regards to heritage and also in this, if you think of something like a very old variety of apple that uh, was developed or it naturally developed before the use of spray chemicals etc then you could think that could potentially have more disease resistance than one that's been developed with the use of chemicals etc so uh, just maybe put that one in the melting pot and think about it so if you get the chance to continue a heritage variety whether it be a permaculture item such as an apple tree or whether it's sort of a seasonal annual or whatever you know just think about what varieties you're growing really and uh, have a look about because there's so many interesting things out there so I'm down here picking some albino beetroot so it's very interesting actually now it seems to be that in my opinion anyway these retain their taste better later in the season than say standard red beetroot now I've not got any science to uh, you know sort of give you with regards to brick scale and sugar content etc but I'm just going by what I've noticed for example pick some of these the other day and I cooked them up yesterday and they were still very sweet indeed whereas by now sometimes it seems that red beetroot can start losing its sweetness by now but uh, I'm still picking these white albino beetroot and they're still absolutely sweet and delicious so that might be something you would consider growing next year in terms of keeping a continuous harvest of sweet beetroot to eat you know right up until this time of year so we'll just uh, see how these do and they really are nice many of the big ones I've picked already because I grow them in plugs and uh, so I remove them or remove some and the other ones remaining then continue to grow when they've got more space so that's one way I keep a continual harvest of beetroot throughout the season now regarding Brussels sprouts so of course let's say you are disappointed with your sprouts or indeed even if uh, you loved your sprout harvest you know whatever pick the leaves you can eat these leaves full of calcium full of so much nutrition and of course it would be a real shame to uh, throw beautiful nutritious leaves on the compost bin 
or throw them away entirely into an unproductive way when you could just pick them. Well, you can see here perpetual spinach. That's not true spinach. True spinach is said to be sweeter and has a smaller leaf. So perpetual spinach, very good for overwintering. Even though it's cold and the days are short, still growing a little bit, which is very beneficial. So I don't like to pick too much from the plants any one time. Leave a bit there. Don't want to sort of uh, damage its spirits too much, if you will. So leave a little bit on, but perpetual spinach, it should keep coming and just keep picking. And uh, you can have some lovely harvests throughout the colder months with it. Now, a little word of warning with regards to all this excitement of picking, make sure you uh, cover the crops back up that uh, you don't want the birds or other opportunistic beings to eat because uh, you could be very disappointed. So I didn't cover these up last time I was down here, the tops of these, al well, these albino beetroot plants, but uh, birds, probably pigeons, I would imagine, there's some circulating around here right now, had a little meal from them, which I don't begrudge, actually, very welcome, because at the end of the day, I left them uncovered, it's my fault, and, uh, you know, they merely had a meal. So there we are, I hope they enjoyed it. But to uh, cover up, and then that way, hopefully, you can protect your crops from getting eaten by something that uh, you don't intend for them to get eaten by. So I'll show you this golden chard. Now this has been a lovely uh, vegetable to grow but you can see slugs, snails etc have had a lovely meal off of that. Once again I don't begrudge them but um, some people might not want to eat this. What I will end up doing with this probably is just boiling it up or steaming it and eating all of it anyway. It doesn't bother me too much but uh, for people who like things to be you know looking perfect etc things like this right you could just uh, cut the top off there and these stems are really lovely, sort of uh, boiled or steamed, and they're really sweet and tasty as well, so very nice. Now, with regards to what I did there, just dropping it on the floor, don't do that, because you can see that uh, this will attract slugs, snails, etc., to your garden, your allotment, and you want to make sure that uh, you don't do that. But uh, So, same with spinach, you know, if, if that had happened with the spinach, you could still eat the stem here, so uh, don't waste and uh, enjoy your greens. Some of you may remember some plantings I made here a few weeks ago. So I've got broad beans, variety Aquadulture Claudia, which are a variety recommended for overwintering here in the UK. Very hardy, down to about minus 10 degrees C, which is around 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So the coldest we got here last winter was about minus 8 degrees C, which is around 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So it should be perfectly fine here. Got some red mizuna here and also some winter gem valen lettuce there. Probably going to end up growing here is something like beetroot. I may end up planting some marrows out here or some courgettes, some squash, pumpkins, etc. But uh, I'm not going to be doing too much planting now until around the springtime. I might put some chilies and or some peppers in on the windowsill. I'm not going to be planting too much now. So this area here is all ready and waiting, if you will. I could consider planting broad beans here, but um, just considering what I'm doing, so probably around March time, maybe late February, I might plant some beetroot in some modular trays, some cell trays, and then transplant them out here maybe around April time. So have a great time over the next few weeks, and I'll probably end up seeing you in the new year. And next year, let's all really go for it together because we truly can do it. No more talking from me. Thanks for everything this year. I truly appreciate it. And I mean this from my heart. Thank you to you all. All the best.